Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this first installment of a series of webinars hosted by Aging Analytics Agency, focusing on a discussion of the current state of healthy human longevity and the translation of developments in geroscience and the science of longevity into clinical practice. Uh, my name is Franco Cortez. Uh, I'm the director of the Aging Analytics Agency, and I will be your host for today's event. We are joined today by Dr. Arkady Prokopov, integrative medicine physician and expert on the topic of hypoxia, hyperoxia, and their effects on mitochondrial aging and human longevity, as well as by Aging Analytics Agency founder, Dmitry Kaminsky who will be joining Dr. Prokopov to discuss some of the pros and cons of different approaches within the general paradigm of intermittent oxygen-associated stress. Aging Analytics Agency has, since its inception in 2013, remained committed to the study and analysis of longevity science, industry, and policy, with the primary goal of helping to close the gap between theory and practice uh, and safely accelerate the actual translation of advances in longevity science and biomedicine into real-world impacts on practical, healthy human longevity. With this in mind, we became intrigued uh, with recent headlines and media coverage, as well as some level of public controversy surrounding the results of a paper recently published in the journal Aging US, uh, which documented the results of intermittent hyperbaric oxygen therapy in human patients who received treatment at Aviva, an Israeli clinic. Uh, the paper claimed to have demonstrated um, an increase in telomere length by an average of 20 percent uh, as well as clearance of senescent cells by around 35 percent in populations of circulating immune cells uh, in the study participants. However, uh, the results of this study have been met with criticisms from a large number of scientists that call into question uh, whether or not the treatment actually resulted um, in an impact in human longevity. Uh, some of these ranging from larger criticisms regarding manipulation of data and false results um, to more neutral criticisms regarding the ways in which the authors actually attempted to validate uh, the results uh, of their treatment, um, specifically centering on the use of telomere extension um, as a component um, of, of that validation, uh, given the fact that uh, telomere extension could, uh, in theory, have uh, been the result of other mechanisms such as general physiological stress. Um, however, the fact that the paper um, also demonstrated a reduction in uh, the number of senescent cells um, in the circulating immune system uh, gives us indication that, uh, in our view, uh, the treatment did actually have some uh, impact in terms of human rejuvenation, per se. <clears throat> Uh, given Aging Analytics Agency's vested interest in the translation of longevity theory into practice, uh, we decided to do some research surrounding the paper's claims in order to offer a more definitive position on the paper's results. With that in mind, we are joined today by our founder, Dmitry Kaminsky, a general partner of Deep Knowledge Group, as well as co-author of the recent book, Longevity Industry 1.0, Defining the Biggest and Most Complex Industry in Human History who founded Aging Analytics Agency in 2013 uh, precisely in order to establish a dedicated analytical agency equipped to answer questions very much like the topic of today's event. We're also joined today by Dr. Arkady Prokopov, an integrative medicine physician and CEO of Athletic High Tech SL, with over 30 years experience in biogerontology, uh, as well as the effects of intermittent hypoxia on mitochondrial aging and human longevity in particular. Dr. Prokopov uh, also has a great deal of history in space tech and space medicine. Having graduated from the Moscow Medical Academy in 1979, and from 1980 to 1991, working with the Moscow Institute of Biomedical Problems as a medical researcher and diving physician. His dissertation topic was the application of pharmacological agents and preconditioning interventions to increase performance and augment stress resistance in saturation divers. Uh, the main practical result of this work turned out to be useful not only for divers and cosmonauts, uh, but also in preventive medicine in general and rehab medicine in particular. In 1994, Arkady moved to Germany and practiced general and integrative medicine there, uh, using the knowledge and experience gained in his research uh, in his everyday practice. From 2000 to 2005, uh, he was working uh, for a U.S. company that manufactured equipment for simulated altitude training and since 2008, he lives and works in Mallorca, Spain. 
Dr. Prokopov uh, is also the author of a recent book, Undoing Lyme Disease, How to Make Your Mitochondria Fight Lyme Borealysis by Surfing Oxygen Waves. Together, Dr. Prokopov and Dimitri will be discussing the pros and cons um, of the intervention that was the subject uh, of that paper published in Aging US, uh, and using it as a general frame uh, to investigate, compare, and contrast uh, various other approaches um, within the general paradigm of intermittent uh, hypoxia and hyperoxia uh, and intermittent oxygen-related stress. Uh, together, they will be discussing um, a SWOT analysis of these different approaches uh, within this general paradigm, as well as discussing key takeaways in terms of the pros and cons between them. Following this, Dr. Prokopov will be delivering a keynote lecture on the history and current state of this broad line of research, uh, as well as giving a more thorough and technical uh, overview of his interpretation of the validity um, of the Aviva Clinic paper. I would now like to pass the floor over to both Dr. Prokopov and Dimitri uh, so that they can share their brief thoughts on this topic before we delve into their extended discussion. Thank you, Franco, for this introduction. Uh, yes, indeed, we at Deep Knowledge Group and Aging Analytics in particular are very much interested uh, not just in science of aging, but first of all, in practical applications to human longevity and life extension. Uh, we are quite confident uh, that uh, such uh, methods and technologies, uh, which we are presented in uh, Adidas Clinic in particular, they actually are providing uh, positive results uh, but there might be some issues. Uh, on the other hand, we were not surprised that uh, that publication and that claim, uh, the scientific publication and claim by, uh, by that clinic that they achieved actual practical results in humans, uh, ignited quite a lot of uh, different um, controversial discussions and even significant critics. Uh, we do think that uh, many of the critics are actually coming from uh, scientists uh, who are quite advanced in the uh, theoretical science of aging, but do not have enough experience in practical applications in, uh, in uh, human longevity in, in clinics in particular uh, being applied to humans. I think uh, Arkady Prokopov will explain maybe some additional specifics. Arkady, please. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me for this discussion. Of course, I, I have a privilege being involved in both uh, modalities. I was, uh, I was working with hyperbaric oxygenation in biomedical research and diving. And I, uh, the last uh, 30 years and more, I, I'm working with intermittent hypoxic treatment, which is the opposite, at, as, as uh, in any case, it looks like opposite. But on the deep molecule, molecule biological level, they are very, very united. They are very close. And uh, also important thing that um, uh, the applicability of hyperbaric oxygenation and efficiency of this modality is quite very well established in the clinical field. But it was lacking some deep explanations on the molecular and the cellular level. And I think that this work of Israeli scientists, it, it just shed more light of these uh, mechanisms. And therefore, I personally don't see um, contradictions, con uh, some um, contradiction in, in, their, in their work and in the results that they achieve. In Israel, researchers claim to have successfully reversed the biological aging process by using oxygen therapy. We are taking the patient into hyperbaric chamber, increasing the pressure, and by increasing the pressure, we are increasing the capacity of the molecules that can go into the lungs and through the lungs to the system. The treatment has been shown to increase telomere length. Telomeres are the protective caps at the end of chromosomes, structures located inside our cells that carry our genetic information. As the human body grows older, the telomeres begin to shorten until they no longer protect the chromosomes, and that's when cells begin to die. The oxygen therapy also benefits stem cells, which serve as a repair system for the body. The most powerful trigger that we have in our body that can stimulate stem cells is hypoxia, is lack of oxygen. 
because when there is lack of oxygen, it serves as a signal to the body so to tell him, oh, there was hypoxia, now we have a problem. Let's start to replicate. We need you. We need you guys. Come along. Replicate and come along. So what we can do, we can take a person, hold his breath, stop his heartbeat, he will have hypoxia, and then he will have stem cells. There is only one problem with regard to that. This is unhealthy. <laughs> so we thought about it more and we said, okay, what the body actually sense? Does the body sense absolute values or does the body sense fluctuations? Does it sense relative value? So we have generated a certain protocol where we are taking the patient into the chamber increasing their blood oxygenation to very high level and then do a fast decline back to the normal value and then going up and down again we are generating fluctuation and this decline from very high back to the normal is being interpreted by the body as hypoxia as lack of oxygen even though the body have extra oxygen and by doing that, we are both replicating the stem cells and giving them the area where they can settle down and build up the tissue. You can see cerebral blood flow that is increasing to an area that previously didn't have blood flow. But we can also see the microstructure of the brain. We can actually see the, the bundles of the, of the white matters in the brain. So we can see that, combine with that, and see the clinical improvement, whatever it is. Cognitive function, motor function, speaking capabilities, coordination, and things like that. Results from one of Tel Aviv University's studies found that the telomere length of four key cells increased by over 20%. For the first time in human beings, we were able to demonstrate that together with the improvement in the functional measurements, brain perfusion, brain microstructure, cognitive function, we can also reverse the aging at the cellular level. We prove that in human beings, not animal models, we can elongate the telomere length. This is DNA, sequence of DNA, and reduce the amount of the senescent cell, which is the aging malfunctioning cells. Okay, great. Thank you, Arkady. So uh, let's actually uh, go into some specifics and compare different methods and uh, techniques and constant pros. So we analyzed uh, approach of methodology of Aviva Clinic and so-called HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, and what we have found uh, that, uh, to keep the parameters. Uh, this is quite expensive uh, treatment, something between 50,000 to 100,000 for three months course. Uh, however, there are included quite a number of uh, useful uh, additional services, such as uh, pre-diagnostic and post-diagnostic, uh, whereas uh, patients can compare the actual impact and results. Uh, this methodology uh, has quite significant scientific validation. It has very significant practical validation. Uh, most likely it has uh, post-COVID rehabilitation effects and uh, it has uh, actual anti-aging longevity rejuvenation uh, impact. We also analyzed uh, MitoPro uh, method, uh, this intermittent hypoxic hyperoxic training. Uh, this, um, uh, this methodology is quite cheaper, so it's between something like $6,000 to $12,000 for three months course. Uh, diagnostic is included. There's quite a lot of scientific validation. Uh, there is practical, uh, very significant practical validation. This methodology, this method is working extremely well for post-COVID rehabilitation and it has a clearer anti-aging longevity regeneration effect. And plus for that, uh, it is uh, uh, mobile in a sense that it's, it is portable. So you can use it not only in clinic, but you can bring it uh, into home. There's also quite well known method, Wim Hof method. So this is, um, you can uh, use it uh, free of charge. You can use uh, mobile app, which costs just $25 per year. Uh, of course, uh, no additional services are included. Uh, it's uh, probably not, don't have 
enough scientific validation. However, it has uh, significant uh, practical validations. Literally, I think more than 1 million people are using this method. Uh, most likely it has some positive results on post-COVID rehabilitation. And most likely it has uh, some positive results on anti-aging longevity rejuvenation. So here we outline some uh, uh, specific uh, parameters and comparisons. And maybe Arkady can provide some uh, more specific technological and scientific um, uh, light on, on these comparisons. Arkady, please. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, we should, um, we should uh, remind or recognize that uh, the all anti-aging strategies, they are targeting the single, single point, end point of the of their goal is uh, genome stability because aging is damage for genome for dna for nuclear and mitochondrial dna and if we can uh, provide uh, provide protection of both genomes we achieve beneficial effects we achieve extension of healthy lifespan and probably extension of general lifespan so, and uh, both technologies target mitochondria, first of all, because intermittent oxygenation, intermittent change of partial oxygen pressure at the mitochondrial level provides evolutionary pressure on mitochondria. And mitochondria exist in each cell in at least in two uh, different uh, lines, so-called wild type mitochondria, which originally come from from uh, a fertilized egg cell and mutated mitochondria. And mutated mitochondria, they tend to multiply during the age, during the li uh, life um, of uh, life, spe especially in the cells that have long life, non-replaceable cells like neurons, like heart muscle cells, myocardial cells. And uh, such long living cells suffer from accumulation of mutated mitochondria. And we see phenomenon of clonal expansion of mutated mitochondria in long living cells. Thank you for this uh, specific explanation. And uh, if I'm right, all these uh, results, they're actually quite well documented over, not, uh, over decades of uh, scientific studies. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I'm coming from clinical side. You know, that's the big difference between experimental anti uh, gerontological research, which is done in vitro, then in animal models. But I come from clinic. I'm, I was working with hyperbaric oxygenation for many years and for many decades with intermittent hypoxic training. And we see a lot of benefits which could not be explained uh, in some simplistic way. Only now we, uh, we're getting closer to molecular biological understanding. We see elucidation of this phenomenon, of the um, uh, clinical phenomenon, which we can now explain using molecular uh, biological understanding, my, mitochondrial biology. And I believe that both technologies target mitochondria at the first line. And how they're safe? Uh, so, in a sense that uh, uh, many uh, many treatments uh, which require some uh, interventions into, into the body, uh, they do the, do have a lot of side effects. They might be dangerous, especially for old people, for unhealthy people. How these methods, uh, in particular, Mitopro and HBOT, how they're uh, potentially safe or actually safe? Yes, that's the very important question. Safety profile for intermittent uh, hyperbaric oxygenation is quite good, quite high, because uh, I think hundreds of thousands of people, aged people, seniors, under, underwent this treatment. For instance, it is used for diabetic uh, ulcers, it's used in intoxications, in anaerobic infections. And if the technology, if the process is controlled by um, certified specialists, normally there are very few complications. They are still possible because just changing barometric pressure 
sometimes causes um, pressure and squeezing of the air volumes like sinuses in the head, or it can cause also elements of uh, decompression sickness. But mm. nevertheless, HBOT is safe. Intermittent hypoxic uh, treatment, even more safe. I think it's the safest uh, method using controlled intermittent oxygenation because we, uh, first of all, we don't change barometric pressure. We change only partial pressure of oxygen. And uh, then also it, it doesn't uh, involve uh, placing patient in a in the volume, like, uh, you know, in an enclosure, hyperbaric enclosure, because some people, they don't tolerate the claustrophobic. And at last we have accumulated evidence from more than, I would say now more than 3 million treatments, um, uh, applications of this method and practically no serious side effects are registered. registered. Understood, thank you. And um, does these methods and these treatments with uh, trainings, uh, does they require FDA approval? How much they, they should be controlled? Yes, very important question. Um, hyperbaric oxygenation has FDA approval for specific clinical cases like anaerobic infection, um, poisoning, or for instance, or decompression sickness. But all other um, applications, they are so-called, so you can call it so off-label applications because they don't carry significant danger, significant risk for patient. And uh, physicians can use this on, so the, on, the, on the concern that it helps and it doesn't damage patient. With intermittent hypoxic treatment, the situation is also a bit of paradox, paradoxical situation. In Russia, it is a, a registered uh, conventional treatment for a range of uh, diseases, degenerative diseases, including, and it, the, there are clinical protocols, uh, clinical manuals to apply this treatment. On the other hand, millions of athletes use intermittent hypoxic training just to improve their performance. And they use it on their own risk. They just purchase um, intermittent uh, hypoxic treatment machines, hypoxicators, and they use on, on uh, uh, using simple, um, uh, so, so to say, manual, simple experience, and there is no need for FDA approval in such case. Okay. So I would say if we, if we take, if we take intermittent hypoxic training as a kind of a modified physical training, which is actually, then there is no conflict with uh, regulatory, uh, regulatory approvals. And, and by the way, uh, in case of uh, MitaPro, this letter T, uh, I-H-H-T means training, in case of uh, Aviva and their method HBOT, letter T means treatment. Uh, what is the difference? Right, right. Yes, <laughs> in, in case of IHHT, it, it is also can be treatment and can be training. It's just interpretation. For instance, you can use um, um, a machine for, for physical training, uh, like a stationary bike. You can use it at home just for training, but when you come to a doctor for endurance test, for cardiac stress test, it is used as a diagnostic tool. Mm -hmm. And also for training, you can come regularly to a doctor's office and undergo treatment protocol, which includes uh, working on stationary bike. So it's a question of uh, interpretation. All right, understood. Uh, and if I'm right, uh, the equipment uh, which is required for HBOT method, it's uh, quite uh, big and quite heavy and uh, it should be installed in specific uh, clinical facilities, whereas uh, MitaPro equipment that's uh, portable and uh, could be installed everywhere, including just at home. Right, right. Yeah, HBO uh, hyperbaric chambers, they uh, especially which uh, were used in this um, treatment, in this study, they are quite, uh, quite sophisticated engineered uh, machines. 
and they because they work with high pressure up to 4 ATA and they, this required a lot of um, technical personnel and the certified users for to to, man, to maintain and to to conduct protocols in contrast to this the intermittent hypoxic training which we use uh, the machines are portable they don't create uh, hyperbaric uh, pressure environment and uh, to use them properly uh, it's much easier you just you know you can learn it in 20 minutes and uh, use it at home okay great and i i, I do assume that uh, uh, many uh, patients who will use mita pro equipment they can um, uh, also communicate uh, uh, with uh, via telemedicine, let's say, um, solutions with uh, supervising uh, doctors and um, experts? Yes, absolutely. That's the big advantage of this method because we, first of all, the uh, device itself has a screen which keeps, which uh, monitors the session parameters. And then at the end of session, these um, parameters can be transmitted via via uh, cloud to the um, expert, to, to the coach, I would say. And um, of course, it, it brings a lot of benefits because you can immediately evaluate the results of this session and advise what is the next session, the next level of training. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, Arkady, because many people uh, are actually using uh, Wim Hof method and uh, many other yoga uh, associated techniques for breathing. Uh, can you also provide some uh, insights, some light, uh, how much they're efficient and uh, what is the actual difference compared with this more uh, really professional techniques such as uh, uh, Mita Pro or Adiva Clinic? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course, these unsigned breathing techniques, they uh, proved their efficiency during thousands and thousands of years of uh, uh, in, in from history development because yoga is over 6,000 years old and the original techniques uh, called in yoga Hastrika or Nisheshericaka Pranayama but Wim Hof just uh, modified it he used also uh, exposure to cold intermittent cold and uh, therefore, it is now popular as Wim Hof method, which is really, uh, it has great value because it's actually, it's free. And uh, in my experience, uh, I believe that this method has really benefits. It can be um, a good uh, component of rehabilitation program in many diseases, including COVID-19 and including also Lyme disease. But mm -hmm. the problem with this method, it uh, first of all, it takes a lot of motivation from a user and uh, the method should be conducted very, um, uh, very exactly uh, each day, for instance, uh, to, to, to achieve good effect, you need to practice it maybe a couple of hours every day. I see. Understood. Yeah. It, uh, will it be right if I will uh, provide some uh, such comparison that uh, you can uh, uh, you can travel from uh, point A to point B using different uh, vehicles. You can travel uh, just on bicycle, and it will be the Imhof method. You can uh, travel on luxury, uh, very luxury car that will be. Uh, HBAT Aviva Clinic method. And you can uh, also travel on a uh, uh, very efficient uh, sport car. Very which good. Which would be uh, Mita Pro method. Yeah. Exactly, Dmitry. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. To each, uh, to um, the, the different people would will, will use different means to achieve the same goals. And this is normal. This is good. Yeah. Okay. Without, the, I, I can say only one, one thing more, that the, there are very, um, uh, very important differences between natural methods like breathing methods which use uh, voluntary ventilation, ventilatory control, which is Wim Hof method, 
and the engineering of such technology, which is done using by sophisticated um, equipment, which is with biofeedback control and with uh, uh, modern technologies. And of course, we, we tend to go to the technological way, not to get back to the old uh, technologies. Right. And uh, if I'm right, here are uh, some particular comparisons between uh, different uh, uh, people who have uh, di different experience uh, with different methods. Yeah. Yes, I can, I can uh, say a couple of words about these graphs. Yeah. On the left side, uh, upper, this is the um, screenshot of a session which was performed by a beginner in Wim Hof method. The green line is actual oxygen saturation, hemoglobin saturation, which is dropping after hyperventilation and respiratory pulse. So after hyperventilation, exhalation, and then he stops his breathing and we see um, uh, oxygen saturation drops, but his heart rate increases. Mm -hmm. yeah. And th th this is a screenshot uh, on your equipment, on uh, MitoProic equipment. Yes, this is with mm -hmm. our device, because the, the device was delivering 11% oxygen, as we see on the blue line, but he was breathing uh, room air, not from the device. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, the second the... screenshot, this is very advanced practitioner who, first of all, he was using our equipment for more than one year, and then he tried Wim Hof method, also breathing room air, but just doing many hyperventilations and then respiratory pause on exhalation. And we see that he could achieve very deep desaturation down to 70% and even to 65%. This is very low um, saturation, it's uh, extreme hypoxia, but judging from his heart rate from the red, red line, we see that it is not a significant stress for his cardiovascular system. So he's perfectly adjusted, adapted to these hypoxic uh, dives. And uh, that is the result of practicing intermittent hypoxia with engineering method, not with Wim Hof method. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the third screenshot, it shows um, a combination of, uh, of uh, Wim Hof method and then breathing from, from the device. So the first two desaturations were performed after hyperventilation, yeah? And the third desaturation, it was just breathing quietly from, from the device with 12% oxygen concentration. And we see that the heart reaction is very, very modest because this person is uh, breathing uh, using this method uh, intermittent hypoxic training for many many years so his heart is very adapted adjusted so normally i see such pictures with marathon runners with triathlon athletes yeah so it shows again the adaptability the adaptation potential which is in this method Dmitry, you have your own experience in using intermittent hypoxic treatment, yeah? Yes, actually, um, this indeed, is your graph. I do have. Uh, this is um, my last training with Wim Hof, so I was capable not to breathe uh, for four minutes, 33 seconds. Sure. And uh, this is the results with uh, Mita Pro equipment, and this is uh, the results of my last uh, training. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we see that. Um, you desaturated also very low till 65 and even lower. Um, and for a long time, for several minutes, for five and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, your heart rate didn't increase much. Yeah, it was just up to 85. And very important is the yellow line, which is the perfusion, blood perfusion uh, index, platysmogram, which shows how reactive your capillaries, how your endothelial system is functioning, which is extremely important indicator of a healthy endothelial system and production of nitrous oxide. Mm -hmm. Arkady, and uh, this HTI in particular, this parameter, what does it mean? 
in practice. This is say. hypoxic training index. It is uh, it is a relative relative uh, value which uh, signifies or indicates the total amount of hypoxic intervention uh, that you received during this session. It depends not only on the uh, actual oxygen concentration, but also on your reaction, how your heart reacts on hypoxia. If you are adapted, if you are adjusted, if you have developed hypoxic preconditioning, you will desaturate much deeper and your IHTA will be higher. So in your case, it's very high. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let's discuss maybe some, you know, major conclusions. Uh, so we do understand that uh, all three methods and uh, in particular uh, HBOT method and uh, the study which they conducted in Adida clinic this method is actually working. It's actually delivering results and uh, it is valid. However, it has some uh, cons and pros, some disadvantages, uh, quite expensive. Uh, you need to, to visit clinic and you, you need to follow some very specific protocol and uh, the equipment uh, should be operated and managed by very, uh, very specific experts. Whereas uh, Mitopro, uh, probably the most uh, optimized method, uh, but at the same time, you can use uh, even uh, free of charge method of uh, Wim Hof for some similar, uh, uh, some methods coming out of yoga. I myself, I, I, uh, I uh, practiced all three methods. Uh, and from my personal experience, I can say that all three of them are delivering actual practical results. However, if you want to achieve uh, uh, the best possible results in the shorter time with uh, reasonable budget. So probably you shall uh, consider to use Mito Pro method. Arkady, and um, maybe some, you know, uh, highlights regarding uh, uh, maybe some probably other methods or, or maybe some kind of major conclusions. Why, once again, you are so much confident that uh, all three methods and uh, and including HBIT and IHHT are actually working? Yes, I again must refer to my clinical experience, to my experience uh, working as a diving physician and later in, in clinic also. Uh, I was um, doing in, uh, hyperbaric oxygenation just also for accelerating recovery of divers after stressful uh, stressful tasks, stressful events. And uh, it was clear that the method is working, but the necessity to make it more affordable, to make it more uh, quick uh, working, um, it brought to, to, to the research and the research came to the paradoxical conclusion that intermittent hypoxia is even more efficient in inducing uh, stress resistance also to hyperbaric oxygenation. It was paradoxical, but nevertheless, I came from uh, hyperbaric oxygenation to intermittent hypoxic treatment to increase stress resistance of divers. And since then, a lot of uh, biomedical research was performed in both, in both fields. But of course, we see that practicability and affordability of intermittent hypoxia is unquestionable. And of course, safety of this method. And therefore, and therefore, but nevertheless, I would say that it is possible to combine both methods. It's possible, for instance, uh, after the uh, in extensive course of intermittent hypoxic training to get some intermittent hyperbaric oxygenation just to fortify, to consolidate the results. That's quite possible. Okay, great. So I, I hope you will provide uh, much more comprehensive and deeper insights into science uh, behind all these practical applications uh, within your lecture. Gladly, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Franka. Thank you. Indeed. Um, thank you both for that uh, excellent discussion. Um, I think it's all, it would also be pertinent to add that um, perhaps one of the most uh, clear um, and striking uh, takeaways from, from today's discussion is the fact that 
no matter what therapy you're uh, analyzing um, or, or trying, um, a very comprehensive panel of uh, biomarkers of human aging needs to be used to uh, actually validate those results. Um, a lot of the criticisms that uh, surround the Aviva Clinic paper uh, were precisely focused on, on these specific uh, markers that, that they used to validate the results, um, and specifically the use of telomerase extension. Um, you know, uh, Aging Analytics Agency has for many years um, really championed the notion um, of, 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 an, of a pressing need um, from both, you know, clinical research to industry to even uh, governmental initiatives and longevity policy, uh, developing a consensus framework um, of actionable, scalable biomarkers uh, of human aging that encompasses a very broad and diverse uh, range of, of uh, biomarkers of aging and longevity uh, in that panel. Um, so I think that that's a very clear uh, takeaway um, from today's event. And interested viewers um, who would like to learn more about that topic uh, can <clears throat> uh, refer to the Aging Analytics Agency website um, uh, to review a uh, analytical report that we produced uh, last year, which actually um, analyzes uh, and aggregates a wide variety of biomarkers of human aging and panels of biomarkers of human aging and benchmarks them according to their degrees of precision uh, versus actionability. Uh, and also, I would like to refer them to uh, the longevity.international uh, website, um, which is hosting a uh, expanded second edition of that report, as well as an associated IT platform um, uh, in which Aging Analytics Agency partnered uh, with uh, longevity.international to uh, essentially update that report, uh, expand its breadth and depth, um, et cetera. So interested viewers can uh, view that report and the IT platform, uh, which again is the most comprehensive uh, overview of uh, biomarkers of human aging and longevity, benchmarked according to precision versus actionability and market readiness today, um, made to date. Uh, I'd like to thank you both um, for uh, joining us uh, for today's event, uh, Dr. Prokopov uh, and Dimitri. Um, it was a very insightful discussion, and I think that our viewers um, learned a lot. Uh, I'd also like to uh, encourage our viewers to stay tuned for the next portion of today's event, uh, in which Dr. Prokopov will deliver a more comprehensive uh, and more technical keynote lecture focusing on the history and current state uh, of a broad line of research focusing on intermittent uh, hypoxia uh, and hyperoxia on human aging and longevity. Uh, as well as his uh, deeper thoughts on the uh, specific validity uh, of, the of the results of the uh, Israeli Aviva Clinic's paper, uh, which served as, as the centerpiece for uh, today's discussion. Uh, I would also like to uh, remind our viewers uh, listening today to visit us at aginganalytics.com uh, and to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the homepage in order to receive regular updates uh, on this and other topics, uh, as well as an exclusive invitation to uh, our next event in this ongoing series uh, of webinars focused on practical human longevity and the translation of longevity science uh, into practice. Um, we are also planning on holding uh, a much larger and broader conference uh, on uh, this topic in the coming months featuring a wider variety of speakers and panelists um, and subscribing to uh, our updates at aginganalytics.com is the safest way to ensure that you remain informed uh, of the date of that event in time to participate. Uh, thank you once again for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again soon.